Simone, in trying to discern uh, the impact of art on various human modalities, one of the, one of the things we talk about is can art affect uh, morality? Uh, you've done work on altruism, which certainly is an aspect of what most people would consider a moral uh, 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 kind of world sphere. Um, and so uh, how has the work that you've done on altruism, especially as it relates to people's elevation of sense, um, affect a, a more, a, a, the capacity of art to deal with morality? Right. So just to say a bit about the kind of work we've done in the past, we've studied a feeling that's been called elevation, moral elevation. And that's the feeling that people experience when they see someone else act in a really selfless manner. So doing positive things for another person. So let's say someone jumps in the river to save a drowning child, right? Something basically risking their own life to, to save someone else. So that would be, that is of course as selfless as it, as it gets. And for an observer, somebody watching, they may feel that they're really overcome by a sense of, you know, this is, this is unbelievable. This human nature, this person is just, you know, an outstanding uh, exemplar, a role model in the moral realm. So it's a feeling of being captivated by another person's exceptionally moral behavior and then feeling inspired, feeling uplifted, and importantly, feeling like you also want to do good things for mm. other people. Mm. So it, it creates a sense of, um, what shall I say, wanting, want, also wanting to be a good person, not necessarily also jumping into a river to save a child, but doing good things in some other aspect of your life. And how have you demonstrated that? What, what's an example of an experimental design when yes. you've shown that? That's right. So, so we did some studies where as an induction, experimental induction of moral elevation, we showed participants a video clip from the Oprah Winfrey show, where somebody is brought on the show who acted as a mentor to mm -hmm. some underprivileged children growing up um, in a very poor neighborhood in Chicago. And then, so, so he acted as a, really changed the lives of these young people. And then he's, you know, celebrated on the show. And then they bring in one of his former students who, mm. who becomes very emotional when he is reunited with, uh, with this person. And it's very engaging. It, 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 it still gives me goosebumps when I look at it oh. now. I've looked at it, I've watched it hundreds of times probably, <laughs> but it's very emotionally engaging. Uh, and that's, that's the idea. So it's, it's meant to create the sense of humanity can be amazing. People oh. can do amazing things. And, and again, our, our hypothesis was that w when people have that feeling, do they also want to do good things? Do they also want to be a, a, a better person? And the way we looked at that was to, uh, to in the experimental context, uh, what shall I say, expose participants to, uh, to an opportunity where they can engage in helping. And the way we did that was basically we staged various things in, in the experiment that you know, participants weren't really aware of what we were doing. So, so that uh, um, worked such that after participants watched that movie, the Oprah Winfrey clip, that was really, you know, elevating. Uh, then they did a couple of other tasks, and then supposedly they were going to do a task on the computer, but the experimenter said, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm getting all these error messages, it's not working, it really, you know, the whole thing crashed. I guess we just have to abort the study, we'll still pay you. You came in, you did, you did your part, we'll pay you, but you're free to leave. Then almost like an afterthought. So all of this is staged, right? The experimenter right, does the right. same thing for every participant. As almost like an afterthought says, oh, wait a minute, actually, while you're here, you could really help me out if you completed some questionnaires. These are relatively tedious and boring math questions, not difficult at all. It's just a bit, you know, it, it's kind of boring, but, but I do need that to get done for another study. So if you could help me out with that, that would be great. So then pretty much most participants stay, stay around and uh, complete some of those questionnaires. And it was remarkable. I have to say, I was really, I was not just surprised, somewhat shocked almost to see how strong the effect of, of having watched that film clip was such that 
participants on average stayed back for another 40 minutes or so, filling out question after question. I mean, we gave them a really thick packet of, mm -hmm. of these questionnaires because we thought, okay, let's just make it a lot so that nobody finishes. But th some did. Some did finish. They stayed for a really long time compared to a control condition where participants had watched a, a nature documentary, which was also interesting enough and, you know, uh, engaging, but didn't have any of those moral qualities. Now, importantly, we had another control condition, which was just about positive affect, uh, they, they, they watched a comedy clip. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about feeling good, being entertained, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there's something about that sense of, wow, look at that, somebody did something really, really amazing. And now I also want to help, I want to do good things. In this case, I'll help the experimenter with those boring yeah. questions. So that, that's terrific, the experimental design. So what were the actual order of magnitude of numbers between the, the uh, Oprah Winfrey you know, yes. primary test and then the yes. two controls, one control which is totally b neutral with mm -hmm. nature yes. and the other was a positive feeling control. Did the controls differ? Did the, positive the controls were comparable, the two controls, Good they were okay. roughly 20 minutes. People stayed for 20 minutes. So people generally, you know, they Wanted tried to help. To help. Yeah. yeah, and that ma roughly made it also the length of time that they were paid for. So they could have gotten out of the study earlier, then they, they stayed around for another 20 minutes or so. So it kind of, it was justified given the payment they got. Okay. But then uh, for the elevation condition, they stayed on average for 40 minutes. Yeah, so, so twice as long. So that seemed very yes, statistically. Yes, it was really striking, to be honest. I did not expect that. Mm. I did not expect that. Mm. And so in the future, you could extend that by having them come back a week later and see what the result would be and to yes. see what the extinguishing time for that is. Well, yeah. that is, that's a big question. Would these kinds of effects linger? Mm. And I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I suspect they might be short-lived while you experience that feeling, mm. while you feel all fired up and motivated. I want to do something. Once that's gone, I... I don't know. So if one wants to, you know, take advantage of that feeling or exploit it in some, some practical ways, one has to strike the iron while it's hot. And, and you know, that, that means, what it, what it also means is that you need to give people opportunities to do good things, right? I mean, and what was striking here was that our experimental induction or the stimulus was very different from the kind of helping behavior that participants yes. engaged mm. in, right? One was about being a mentor uh, of some, you know, disadvantaged children. The other was about filling out questionnaires. I mean, it mm. couldn't be any more different, mm. but it's all, it, it's the common theme of doing something good for another person.